Hi, I'm Johnny Engineer Turmel, and this is my report on the Ottawa Vanier by election provincial for the province of Ontario, where I'm running among 11 candidates. Now, there was a first debate where French speaking candidates were all invited, and eight of us showed up out of 11. And then there was a second debate where I didn't get an invitation, so I suspected it was going to be a fixed, crooked debate where only the preferred candidates get exposure and the other guys get excluded and then they invite the media to come and broad past the crooked debate to get out the crookedness to the whole group. So I show up at the second debate and sure enough it's a four guys. So I grab his chair, sat on stage, said I want to participate and it turned into an uproar. So here's the report on that. And why this was such great fun, because when I was busted in 93 with the biggest game in house in the world, I mean, underground game in house, and if they hadn't stopped me, I'd have run gambling casinos in across Canada. I'd already started three more coming up, Niagara Falls, Toronto, and Brockville, when they stopped me, and the crown attorney who stopped me was Andre Marin, the Tory candidate. So I got to come back after 22 years payback for what he did to me, and how he crooked it up the law to get me. So this is the report on the Ottawa Vanier provincial by-election and my revenge on Andre Mallet. Back in 1989, I was acquitted of running a gaming house because the judge had ruled that I had not made anything out of keeping the place, no gain out of selling food to the gamblers in the back room, and B, I had not charged a fee, I had not taken a rake off, I didn't have a bank that had an edge that was excluding other people, and there was no fixed edge in the game like craps. So no illegal way of winning chips, and no illegal way of getting money. Section A, money, section B, chips. So, after a month, they did not appeal. So I figured, wow, that was the only way they could really stop me. So next thing you know, I had a huge casino in Ottawa with 155 employees and uh, 28 tables. And uh, so anyway, I had announced I was going to open more casinos in Toronto, Niagara Falls, and Brockville. And I had ads in the newspapers, including a casino term Al Kazkar at the tracks. And then suddenly, boom, I get busted again. Now, my poor employees all lost their jobs and were pretty upset about it. And the policeman testified I ran an honest game, but the judge found me guilty anyway. Now, here's what happened. The Crown Attorney in that case is the guy running for the Tories in this by-election, Andre Mary. And now I'm going to explain what he did that was crooked. And I wrote up this flyer. So... It said, uh, Casino Turmel convicted by Andre Mary's corruption of the criminal code. Smartest man on earth.ca slash gambler has the details of the prosecution of the Project Robin Hood raid on Casino Turmel in Ottawa in 1993. Project Robin Hood. Hey, I got along with the Ottawa police. They knew I was no danger. In 1989, Judge Lennox acquitted me of keeping a common gaming house because Judge Fontana acquitted those found in my underground game since I hadn't sold anything to them and I hadn't won any money in any legal way. I let them be the bank if they wanted. Judge said that makes it fair. Well, next thing you know, I got all these tables, 28 tables in a big casino. And uh, then Andre Mary dreams up a new way of getting me. Well, he charges me, shuts down my machine, and if he hadn't, I'd probably be quite rich right now, right? I'd be running the casino in the screen Canada. And I argued, hey, autrefois acquis in French means already formally acquitted, because that's a defense. Well, anyway, he told the judge that, look it, even though it's the same game as the Bayshore Hotel, now that he moved, he can charge me again and try and argue it again. Well, no, you're not supposed to. You're supposed to appeal originally. But that's what he told the judge, that autrefois a key doesn't apply because I moved my set of rules in my game. And he wants to try again. And the judge said, okay. Now, in the, now since I had not made any gst able gain under Section A, selling stuff, and all my increases were chips from my winnings, anyway, Mary told the court that the criminal code made a distinction between gain and win, but his dictionary he brought to court said they were the same thing. 
So using the dictionary definition, the judge could expand the A section to include B winnings that had never been illegal before. Matt Sagel, an attorney who card counter, I let him play in my casino and beat me, reasonable stakes, an attorney permitted to assist me, argued the strict interpretation of criminal statutes, which means that though a judge can lessen the scope of a statute that's too onerous, no, no, that's too tough, you know, I'll let you go, a judge cannot expand the scope to make new criminals. Parliament does that. Here, there was a citation in the criminal code asking how the judge decided to change the meaning of the word gain to expand it to my formerly legal winnings. So Judge Wright bought it, and he expanded the meaning of the word gain under Section A so that it now included winnings they couldn't catch under Section B. Since Parliament did not expand the criminal code, my judge did, that corruption had to be added as a note to the criminal code. Here, right in the criminal code, is that note. Andre Mary's corrupt use of the dictionary instead of the criminal code to violate the strict interpretation of criminal statutes. Here's what it says in the criminal code under the definition of gain. The new definition from a judge, not parliament. As used in paragraph A, gain can include direct winnings now. Consequently, where the accused was an exceptionally skilled professional gambler who supported the commercial gaming establishment, there was no commerce going on, just playing. But, of course, it corrupts the meaning anyway, doesn't it? Makes it sound like there was commerce, we got him. There wasn't. And paid employees out of his large winnings, butlers, maids, servants, yes, I did. The premises fell within the meaning of common gaming house in R versus Termel 1996. And boy, did they get a lot of tips from the gamblers when there was no rake off to me. And now the crown attorney who made new law by getting a judge to use the dictionary instead of the criminal code wants to get into the legislature to write new laws. Well, there was only one good precedent that came out of the thing. Um, they wanted to use the proceeds of crime on me. He said, you made a million bucks, and we want to put him in jail until he gives it back. Now, I said I spent it all. I took all the money, and I ran for prime minister of Canada with an abolitionist party and 80 candidates, one more than the Greens. I blew it all. And the judge ruled, after the cops couldn't find it after looking for a year, that Robin Hood didn't have any money left, and ruled that proceeds of crime is just for people who are hiding it, not for guys who spent it. So I beat it by spending it. But here's the point. The press, when they were talking about it, they kept showing these pictures of seized houses and seized yachts and seized things. And people were thinking, wow, that was my stuff that they had seized. It wasn't. I spent it all on running for prime minister. Then got me into the UN. So that is my beef against Andre Merang for having used the dictionary in the courts. And I came to Ottawa Vanier to do a number on him. Now, I got the chance in the first French debate, but I never got the chance in the second. French debate next. Okay, I'm going to have to go through the whole uh, thing. I'm just going to chop out everything but my stuff, just so you get an idea of what I was like. David McClure, uh, du uh, parti, uh, quel parti est-ce que c'est McClure? Du Parti Freedom d'Ottawa. Monsieur John Turbell, du Parti des Pauvres. Madame Elisabeth de Vielle-Castel, du Parti Alt au Nouvel Agenda Sexuel. Monsieur Above, uh, Zenon of the, or Zenon of the Above, uh, du Parti Non of the Above, bonsoir. Monsieur Dean Harris, uh, du Parti uh, Libertarien, bonsoir. Madame Nathalie Desrosiers, du Parti Libéral, bonsoir. Monsieur Claude Bisson, du Parti Néo-Démocrate. Et Monsieur André Marin, du Parti Progressiste Conservateur. Merci bonsoir. beaucoup et bon débat. Well, all right, there we go. That's Andre Marion right there. He put on a little bit of weight. Deux de vous assez âgés, vous vous souviendrez que j'étais candidat à la mairie d'Ottawa et même élection dans le... Those of you who are old enough will remember that I was a candidate at many elections in the Ottawa area, mayor, and provincial elections. 
Vous avez 80, 80, je sais plus. Mais aussi, j'étais Ottawa. And now I'm up to 90. I was gambling crusader. Also gambling crusader. J'ai légalisé le, le jeu. I wanted to legalize gambling. J'ai subi many descents. Suffered many raids. Prouvé coupable, excepté en 1980. Now I'm not guilty usually, but once not guilty. 1989. Whoa. Tu n'as pas demandé de l'argent en vendant des choses aux gamblers, protection A, et tu n'as pas fait ça, 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 ça. Tu n'as pas fait ça, 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 la couronne, the crown, qui vient au juge et qui écoute, on sait que dans le code criminel, le gain de la place est traité différemment que le gain du juge. Et on sait que Turnell a tout gagné But Turnell won everything legally. Donc, il va falloir changer le mot gain. We change the word gain. Et le juge a entendu la loi pour m'attraper. Et ça, c'est dans le code criminel. That's in the criminal Merci, code. C'est à vous, Madame Deviat. That was a setup. More will come. Okay, so they want to know whether I agree Ottawa should be a bilingual town, what my ties would be to the French community, and what my role would be. Bilingual, sure. So send me your emails. Mon rôle sera de offrir assez d'argent. My role is to offer enough money to do things right, because it's a lot that screws everything. Here's the Ontario debt. In 1974, before then almost nothing, it starts to grow exponentially. The Canadian debt. In 1974, it starts to grow exponentially with the interest and the debt service. They've cost us a trillion dollars. 70,000 apiece if you count the provincial trillion. There would be in our account, accounts today if they hadn't done that in 1974. So, if you want to know what to do, go to smartestmanonearth.ca Hey, I got a straight 17 in science. Four years in game theory. Know anybody else who dare say smartest man? I took it, nobody's laughed. Go see why. You lost your 70 Gs. So the solution is more money. The solution to poverty is more money. Yes. It's the lack of money that screws everything. We can never do it to the max. Because in 74, before then, Ontario and the provinces could borrow money interest free at the Bank of Canada level interest for infrastructure. And in 1974, Trudeau shut those loans forced all the provinces and governments to go borrow from private banks at interest. And here's the growth of debt. Since 1974, Trudeau shut the window for interest-free loans. So, I want to open them again. And I can reprogram the computer provincial to I have to go check out my website. Well, this is about poverty and affordable housing. And I see my software spread around the world, 60 nations. Permit single parents to log on what nights they can double duty babysit each other's kids and pay each other with one hour bills even when they're broke. Double duty et se payer avec des notes de une heure quand ils n'ont pas d'argent. 
A time bed. That's how my software works around the world. But it could work at the Bank of Canada. Quantitative easing under the with your dunning get million. Two thousand eight quantitative easing to the banks without interest. To lend out an interest. Jeremy Corbyn, Corbyn in the UK wants quantitative easing for the state. Just like Canada had. I want quant for the citizens. So we can log on to the Bank of Canada like PayPal. And cut checks to pay all our interest bearing debts. And after that, all payments go against principal. And we'll get out of debt someday. Have you ever heard anybody else talk about how to get out of debt? Before me? Affordable housing. With debts without interest, we only pay for the depreciation of the house. Okay, this is about immigration, cap, and typical how to help them. If we weren't bombing them, they wouldn't come here. And if we gave them interest-free loans, credit cards, they might go back. Our fault, we should help them. The 5%, how to defend? Without, an, without enough money, can't do anything. But with enough money, Everything's, do everything's no. doable. You think Termel's a dreamer. That's why they invited me to the United Nations in 2000 to give a speech on the banking system of the future where they passed the Unilets resolution. Interest free loans based on your work. You can see. Bill Clinton, Saudi, and John you I was there. Made the news. Laugh all you want. They don't tell you the stories about me. They don't tell you what I've accomplished. This is one of the better ones. Another one's coming up later. Oh, you'll have to tell us, eh? Oh, we want to know. Wait. Okay. Oh, not right now, but you'll tell us, right? Okay. All right. <laughs> this one's funny. I had to beat up the lady. Okay, this is kind of funny because they asked the same question about a bilingual Ottawa. And she even said, let's watch the first question. So obviously, I'm not going to waste my time saying yes twice very, for very long. Well, avec assez d'argent, vous avez plus besoin With enough money, you don't need help. Now I finish my story. Why don't you know the things I do? In 2003, to prove the law against marijuana was dead, I went to Parliament Hill with seven pounds of marijuana, enough for a life sentence, and I was busted. But the citizen, the wife, the son, mayoral candidate busted with a life sentence supplied didn't make the news. But Later on, I made him drop 4,000 charges in one shot. Back pages! Back pages. Not even my name! And I get it. Are you for or against the bilingual? Hey, you repeated the same question. I already said yes. Did you forget my first answer? I'm giving you something new. They didn't report that either. Ah, my chance to lower the boom on Mary. I finished the story. I was in court. Crown said, instead of using the criminal code, <laughs> use the dictionary. And the judge said, okay, use the dictionary to try and guilt him for something never before illegal. A judge can restrict the law to let you go. Two orders. He can't extend it to get you. And the Crown found a judge who would extend the judge to get me. And if you want the whole story, 
Ah, Mr. Turmel, you've had the chance to get your revenge. Mr. Marin, a right to respond. <laughs> you didn't hear it, but he said something like, you know, you got to be good with dictionaries or you got to use know how to use your dictionary, something like that. <laughs> but he admitted he used the dictionary, okay? So that's why I laughed. <laughs> Uh, All right, we're out of here. There's the French debate, and I was going to do the same thing to Mr. Marin at the English debate, but with a lot more vehemence, force, and efficacy in language, because French is kind of my first, but then third, second language now. So that's enough for now. Next one, the other debate, English. Okay, when I showed up at the Knights of Columbus Hall, I thought it was starting at 7.30 and it was just starting at 7, so I was just a few minutes late, but it ended up being perfect. If I'd been there in advance, all the activity would have started before the Rogers turned on their video. Now remember, I'm using this video because Rogers hasn't posted the video of the debate up at their English website like they did at their French website. Okay? <laughs> Isn't that neat? You got to go to Watching Ottawa. And they ended up censoring this thing. You'll see later. So um, here I am. I walk in and I see that everything's going. The four guys are on stage. Oops, it means for sure I got no invite, no chair for me. And I see an empty chair in front. So I walk by, grab it, and then I go on stage. No. was not invited to the forum tonight. Uh, that would be up to the organizers, I guess. For me, we can see that there's one of the candidates which chose to invite the forum, maybe not the parties. I'm sorry, I'm like, not to please clear if you don't mind. <laughs> okay, how many clappers do you think are there? 50? No. 20? Nah, probably under 10. Um, I'm sorry. I got a right to be here. I paid my money. I'm staying. Is he on the ballot? Yes. Is he with 11 candidates, four of whom have been invited by the groups that organized this forum? And uh, Mr. The organizer's frustrated. We are covering the costs. I think I don't have respect for those groups. Oh, none of the above has joined me now. Don't have to ask for that. So, if I understand you correctly, uh, Mr. Turnell, 
you would rather the dissident than the big place. Well, that's fair for everybody. If that's you know, but I'd rather it take place with the people who show. <laughs> Came on purpose to have my talk. I think you should let me speak. <laughs> if the other guys didn't care enough to come, tough. He did. I have nothing better to do tonight but be here. I hear. I hear. You can call two chairs. Can they call? Hey, sounds like I've got at least as many clappers as the guys who were mad. It's rare when the audience speaks up. Congratulations. Yay. All right. All right. All right. All right. They showed up. Now here's the let we showed up, thank you. Here's the dilemma. You got people who want to hear what we have to say, and you got people who don't want them to hear what we have to say. Uh, the boo bird's getting louder. Uh, in case they start throwing. <laughs> the end result is going to be fewer questions from the public. It's going to be. Yeah, that's algebra. Fewer questions if there were candidates. Don't have the margin to make this event last longer. So, so if we have more answers for more candidates, divide by six. There will be fewer questions. Fewer questions. Algebra. So let's just put the question to the floor. Oh, it's a vote. Democracy, Mr. Terrell, based on the Don't think you're going to vote away my rights. So I'm not going to obey. The audience wants. I told them. Don't even think you're going to vote away my rights. I'm not going to obey. <laughs> I didn't hear that. Everybody, or do we move on with the four candidates? Everybody! 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 Everybody
I'll skip ahead. I don't want to hear it in a minute. Okay, here I am. They've now had the candidates have their chance to make their one-minute statements, and they think they're going to go on somewhere else and skip me. <laughs> here we go. I stand up. <laughs> If I, if I could just turn it right now, please subscribe. Will you let us go on the again? If he gives me two minutes to address the crowd, will I then slink away? Do you take that deal if they offered it to you? Well, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. He's that kind of a doofus that he'd be belittled. He'd walk out after two minutes while the others stay there and snicker at him for not getting his fair share of time. And that's the difference between a guy like him and me. their own videos, right? Hell, Rogers is never showing it. Hey, 
Okay, now, not the Russia of today, who've got a lot better elections than the U.S. do, or even Canada, but the Russia of commie days, when he, the moderator, and I were kids. He knows what I meant when I called him a commie. Yeah. How come AFCO, the French debate, could have all the candidates and you, incompetents, couldn't? Hey, and how come French Rogers could put up the, the video in the archive and Angus Rogers isn't doing it? You can't go watch this on Rogers. Oh, you, you can't hey, watch it here. Oh, you tell. Shame on you. Shame on you in front of your kids. Voting not to let one of the candidates speak. I'm just voting to let the other voters not hear. You have no respect for people. You have no respect for people. You have no respect for you. You have no respect for people. You have no respect for you. You have no respect for people. 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 I do get people pretty demented, don't you? You have no respect for people. 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 What a great seven team of science. And you want to listen to the volume. <laughs> Talk about Ontario Hydro. Get electrical engineers. Get a partner to talk about hydro. Yes, sir. My 90 minutes, if you don't know it, really call up the meeting rather than let me have my 90 seconds. You can watch on French Rogers if you want to see how I am normally. And you don't cheat me. If you want to come on, you can cheat me or go away. Hey, go away, them boy. I got nothing to do with my own policy. You would let them keep you off the debate if you're a candidate. Go away, them boy. You're feeling the love for me out here. Go away, them boy. You can let them push you around like that. Not me. Nobody cheats me without bloody fight. Ah. You're a bunch of chicks! Alright. Yeah, all this stuff is gone. You're a bunch of chicks! Shame on you! 90 seconds is all I wanted! Is it out there? You get to go see the French debate!
<laughs> this thin little man is very angry. He said they're calling the cops on you. I you think that worries me. Oh, he's angry. He's angry. Looking for a fight. Got it. <laughs> Police! Legal force! She asked me, would you come with me for a minute? And I went, no, nope. you gotta order me. Preferably take me by the arm. She does. Okay, take me by the arm and I'll go. Try to cheat me, they deserve the disaster. <laughs> All right. They've been restrained officially. Custody. as I was going out saying, Ottawa then, you democracy. Then I realized how many people were just sitting there not doing anything, the majority. So I said, no, no, don't mean it. Take it back. I won't make fun of you. There it is. There's the English debate at the Knights of Columbus Hall. And next, we're going to find out how the reporters spin it. Okay, now we're going to check out the media spin. The first article I'll go is Howling session at the start of the candidates' debate in Ottawa Vanier. And it basically said a candidate was escorted out of the hall. And uh, the candidate, John Turmel, who hadn't been invited to take part, went on stage and had uh, exchanges to try and participate with force to the event. Despite repeated appeals from organizers and certain residents that he leave, Mr. Turmel stayed in place insisting on his right to take part in the debate. And, of course, Mr. Z, none of the above, joined me there to eventually with a chair next door. He'd already, um, oh, he was rejoined by uh, none of the above. And we sat there with, on chairs and we weren't going to be moved. Leave, leave, the citizens shouted. So, with the, with the tone rapidly getting heated between Termel and certain members of the audience and the organizers, I got things to say. I want to be heard, cried the independent candidate. But the crowd wouldn't hear anything of it. And this little video, let's see what it's about. Uh, just the lady uh, taking me into custody and removing me, and that's about it. So, finally the police showed up 
who had been called by the organizers, who then escorted uh, them out of the hall to the great relief of several citizens who'd come to, a, to the debate. So that's one. Now I'm going to mention the great article, I thought fair, called Democracy Contested, and that was in Le Droit by Pierre Jury. Far, 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 far different. So let me look at it, just because that's a good headline. So his editorial. The by-election in Ottawa, Vanier, was like a theater of skirmishes on Thursday night when the eternal trouble fest John Termal demanded the right to speak for him and another independent, which had been refused by the organizers, a group of organ community organizations. Mr. Termal is one of these kinds of Canadians who loves taking the um, a nasty pleasure to push back the limits of legislation. Um, he has contested the laws on gaming houses and the laws on marijuana, and his most recent uh, battle horse is debt though, for the provinces and the role of the Bank of Canada. And he's running dozens of elections, including mayor of Ottawa, using electoral platforms to push the established order. Mr. Termel had not been invited Thursday, one of several in the riding. Uh, doesn't matter, he showed up anyway, and at the very first question of the moderator, Philippe Marcoux, he demanded the right to speak like the others. All the efforts to get him to leave the stage fell on deaf ears. He, it's going to take a badge and a gun of a policeman to make me get out of here, he said, uh, to the crowd of about 250 people. These organizers held that the debate was actually a private activity, which is false. Um, and what's false, evidently, organizations of citizens who invite the electors to a hall like the Knights of Columbus, that's not characterized as a private evening. There's not even a charge to get in. It was certainly a public meeting. But to the uh, detour of democracy that Termel was trying to pull, <laughs> like his terrorist years in the 1970s, several citizens responded uh, with an equivalent reply by booing copiously. So briefly, the democracy is being tested, and it doesn't look too well, but everybody's got their manieres, their ways of doing, and Mr. Termel left the hall after several minutes once the police asked him and had come to return order. This usurpation of democracy is on lips in the United States, where many of the Hillary supporters are looking for ways to counter Donald Trump. So I'm going to skip the rest of that paragraph. But like demonstrated by the electors in Ottawa Vanier, who come to the meeting taking time to go, democracy isn't always elegant, but should be respected. When the decision to restrain the invitations, limit the invitations to representatives of the big parties, nah, might be justified sometime with TV shows who really got to limit things down and have to limit their invitations. But organizations of citizens don't have these same imperatives. All official candidates should be welcome, even if it makes it a little more difficult. And in revenge, democracy gains by giving the right of speech to everyone, even the most marginalized. Thank you, Pierre Jury. Okay, now back to John Termel, the disruptor. Okay, at the CBC, it says police escort two uninvited candidates out of Ottawa Vanier by election debate. Candidates from the proper party and none of the above party not invited by CBC. There we are. John Turnoff from the proper party and the man who legally changed his name joined the debate uninvited. So, can't let me move this over a bit. Touch. Candidates from two fringe parties tried to reach to join a debate for the provincial Ottawa Vanier by election despite a lack of invitation until police were called to escort them out on Thursday night. There are 11 candidates running to replace the longtime MP. John Termel from the Popper Party and a man who legally changed his name to none of the above are joining the four invited candidates on stage. And even as those who came to watch the debate shouted for them to leave, not all those who came, the candidates remained on stage until police arrived and escorted them out. The debate then started and 20 minutes later focused on hydro rates. 
pictures of the big four that were supposed to be the top of the media the next day, list the candidates. Oh, and this picture of me snarling. So I guess if you're going to cheat me, you get a snarl. Too bad. What can I say? Can it get me bigger? All right, so they got that picture and they showed it. I was snarling. Yes. Okay, next from OttawaStart.com. Debate goes off the rails after perennial candidate crashes stage. Devin Berry. Da -da -da -da. Oh, my clip from the Guinness records. Most elections contested. Since 1979, independent candidate John C. Termel, the engineer of Nepean, Ontario, Canada, has contested 41 elections at municipal, provincial, and federal level. In 1993, he founded the Federal Abolitionist Party of Canada. And in 12, I think it was five years ago, I founded the Popper Party of Ontario. So the Ottawa Vanier candidates debate was buried 20 minutes in when it was interrupted by one of Canada's most prolific political candidates. John Termel has run for political office in Canada at least 84 times, and that's 90 now, at all levels of government over the past few decades, frequently in Ottawa. He was even inducted into the 1997 Guinness Book of Records for most elections contested. Nice he didn't mention most elections lost. I got that too. He's currently running in Ottawa Vanier under the Popper Party, which he found in 2011. Termel was not invited to take part in Thursday's debate, but he tried to anyway. And David Reevely wrote, John Termel has crashed the stage, bringing up his own chair. Well, nothing crashed, but I did bring up my own chair. Termel was joined by another perennial candidate, none of the above, who crashed as well. The audience had mixed reactions, and Reevely says, let the man say his piece, one woman says. Termel congratulates the audience for speaking up. Go away, another person shouts. And that person doesn't want the first person to have her wish to hear me speak granted. I wonder who will win, the one who wants to thwart the other's right to listen, or the one who doesn't. Video of the entire incident was broadcast by Ottawa Watch and showed Termal being escorted off the stage out of the building by several police officers. Journalists covering the debate tweeted some of their own videos. But don't forget, the Ottawa Watch, they put in that thing to cut out the gory stuff. <laughs> Does that many people seem upset? And I don't have any debate. John Turmel disrupting, says Brian Platt. Tells crowd only a police officer will get him off the stage. Yeah. It wasn't the first time Turmel crashed the debate. In 2009, the Globe and Mail reported on a similar incident, the by election in St. Paul's. And others. And others. Sud others. So. We have three gong show, he calls it. At the Ottawa Vanier candidates debate, debate David Reevely. OttawaCitizen.com. I thought he was in the sun as well. Anyway, here it is. Of course, there's the picture. And what's his opinion? Oh, wow. The political vandalism of John Turmel. Just got a few lines in my report on Thursday night's candidates debate in Ottawa Vanier. But the extent of the awfulness he visited on the political process deserves a little more attention. You think he's going to notice that it was undemocratic and that it got exposed badly? No, them getting caught was the horrible thing, the vandalism. A bunch of community associations and similar groups got together to rent the Knights of Columbus Hall on MacArthur and invited the candidates from the four biggest parties to come represent themselves so that nothing new ever gets heard. The ones you always see on TV, bring them, but nothing new, please. Can't handle it. The, there are 11 registered candidates, including Termel, and a guy who's legally changed his name to end up at the bottom of the list. Neither Termel nor none of the above was invited into the debate. Both showed up and took chairs on the stage in the hall, demanding the right to participate. Philippe Marcoux, the graceful Radio Canada host, moderating the debate, wasn't sure what to do at first. He wasn't an organizer. Should he give these guys time? Termel, oh, people from organizing groups, conferenced briefly and decided no. Big mistake, wasn't it? Termel and none of the above hadn't been invited, and they wouldn't get a sixth of the two-hour debate each to do whatever they wanted, although the others could do whatever they wanted with their sixth. Termel flipped out. Yeah, you saw me stand up and say, my turn. But to a prostitute who's having delusions, I flipped out. 
I got a right to be here. I paid my money. I'm staying, he said. He has a lot of experience flipping out. Yes, I do stand up and say I want the right to speak many times. I really flip out a lot. Because he has a lot of experience running for offices all across the land, not being invited to debates, and crashing them. The organizers thought they might work around the crashers, letting them stay on stage, but not directing any questions to them. Yeah, he and the organizers thought that would work. <laughs> that lasted until the four top candidates had made short opening statements, and then in sequence, going along the table, it would have been Termel's turn. He leaped to his feet. Well, I didn't leap. And started yelling about his rights. I said, my turn. The crowd booed him. He wasn't having it. You got to bring a cop, he shouted at one point. Trespassing's not an indictable offense. Now, he missed the election and the vote and all that stuff. Not in there, you know. Some people voted so the other people shouldn't be able to hear. You got to bring a cop, he shouted at one point. Trespassing's not an indictable offense. Termel is really expert at this kind of disruption and indictable offense. Murder, for instance, is something citizens can take action on themselves if they see it going down. If you see someone kill someone and you're in a position to act, you can tap a bad guy and hold them until the police arrive. Trespassing isn't like that. It's less serious crime, and that means you have to call the police to come deal with it. Brian Platt said, organizers beg people to stay. Did you see anybody leaving? <laughs> Tell them that the police have been called. And then he said, police are here. What a nightmare. What a nightmare. In this case, it took the police about 15 minutes to arrive. Termel spent the time snarling and spitting at anyone who tried to talk to him. Whoa, 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 whoa. I was snarling. I wasn't spitting. Well, he's a prostitute. Exaggerate. Who's going to correct him, right? An organizer approached him on the stage, and I couldn't catch everything he said over the din. Doesn't know what was said. But he addressed her dismissively as sweetie. Oh, calling someone sweetie is dismissive. Z, none of the above, sat quietly while this was all going on. He left peacefully along with Termel once the police came to ask them. The invited candidates had all left the stage. Some in the crowd had put on their coats and had departed. So while this was going on, a woman who runs this physiotherapy clinic came up to talk to me. Pamela Sykierski moved her business to Vanier and is troubled by some of what goes on in the streets there. She worked 12 hours on Thursday, then came to the meeting to hear what the candidates had to say about what they do in and for the neighborhood. And then this buffoon comes along and disrupts it so nobody can get anything done. Yeah, she didn't want to hear all the possible answers, only the four she'd been hearing all her life. <laughs> Pamela, real bright. So anyway, here's the thing. A debate like this, though it has a public purpose and broadcast, is not a public event. Ah, yes, yes, yes. It's organized by, well, the organizers who pay for the costs out of their own money. So they should be able to ban who they want to influence the election and rig it like they do down in the United States with Donald Trump, right? All that bad on Trump and good for Hillary, that's legal there and here. So they organize, they pay, they decide who's invited. If they don't invite a suitable number of candidates, people don't come. Sure. If they didn't, if they invite too many, like 11, people don't come. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. If they invited everybody, people wouldn't come. Anyway, he's delusional, right? By the same lights, you don't have a right to media coverage just because you put your name on the ballot. Well, if you're going to have a public meeting covered by the media, well, if you have a right to the democratic participation, you have a right to that media too, don't you? My own little algorithm. He has an algorithm. Pretends he has a technical brain for taking a candidate seriously as this. Do you have the evidence of achievement in some significant fields of endeavor? Well, Let's! Time banking, United Nations, Guinness World Record, biggest casino bust in history. Oh, I guess he didn't remember those. 4,000 charges dropped. Previous experience in politics, business, academe, they all count. Do you have any significant policy proposals? Ah, he's unaware of interest-free loans from the central bank to pay off our interest-bearing debts. 
never dawned, never impressed him much, that idea. He likes paying interest on his mortgage. He's an obedient slave. Do you have evidence of meaningful support? And that's about as most stupid an argument as you can get. Because a brand new idea can't have evidence of support, can it? So, but that's what he wants and let's forget, let's not forget. He knows about algorithms. He must have passed his tape recorder 101 in journalism school. Got a D minus. He knows about algorithms. Show two out of three and I'll devote some energy to you. Ah, so he has criteria where he won't devote energy to doing it completely. He's not a com uh, comment, uh, he's not oh, a, a professional. So if you manage the third without either of the first two, you'll probably also get my attention. But I don't think I've ever seen a case where that happened. Okay, so meaningful support from a guy with no ideas. He's right, it doesn't happen often. But he doesn't check out the good ideas, does he? So, um, I get to judge whether you've met the standard. Ta-da! Mr. D minus in tape recorder 101. Is there a risk in that? Sure, I could get it wrong. Like right now, interest-free loans from the central bank to pay off our interest-bearing debts ain't as stupid as this dolt thinks it is. But that's part of my job every day, deciding what's important enough to report on because there's only so much time in a day. And that's why you have such a lousy <laughs> journalism and why people hold prostitutes in such disregard. If I'm wrong, I'll be punished by readers for blowing it. No, you won't. Your boss will keep paying you to be wrong. And for not having told them something important. Hey, they didn't know what you didn't tell them. So how do you figure they're going to find out what you didn't tell them that was important? You didn't think interest-free loans to pay off all their debts was important. Duh. I don't want to waste the audience's time on candidates who are running on a lark. But you're wasting their time on a prostitute who doesn't do his research. And invite whoever you want, whomever you want. Get your English right, low tech. You have a right to run. You don't have a legal guaranteed right to anyone's attention. That you have to earn. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How are you supposed to do that when you're excluded from the debates? Oh, fulfill his three conditions first. Well, sorry. Don't really have that much respect for his opinion. His other title was on the John Turnell Sideshow at last night's debate. You don't have a right to attention. Well, you don't have a right to broadcast an de un undemocratic debate. It's my point. Oh, but you say you do, and you're right. The Supreme Court of Canada said Rogers can exclude candidates. And these private people have the legal right to call the cops and exclude me. They do. You saw it happen. They called the cops, said, we rented the place. We are the proprietors for tonight, and we want him removed or charged with trespassing if he comes back. And that's why it's legal for them to hold crooked debates in Canada. It is, but it's also legal for me to show up as part of the public and then take a seat and make them use maximum force to remove me and demonstrate the undemocratic nature of the event that he called vandalism. That was so awful. We got exposed with the crookedness of our debate. Four out of 11 ideas, and it's the same four we always hear all the time. Expect much new for this low-tech brain to attempt to cope with? Anyway, last but not least, Reevely again. Ottawa Vanity Debate shows candidates as party policy books in human form. He says, the debate got an ugly start when constant candidate John Turmel and the guy illegally changed his name complained to the organizers, the large community associations group, in the main, hadn't invited them. You want to hear what I have to say, Termel demanded? No, the crowd shouted. Not all the crowd. Remember that? But he didn't mention that, did he? Especially the lady who said, let him speak. Didn't mention that. Termel yelled abuse until the... I said, hey, my turn, my turn. 90 seconds, 90 seconds. And I returned abuse. Uh, until the police came for him and none of the above. Then it turned into a pretty normal debate among the group of well-meaning, but so, so candidates. So the big four had nothing new to offer. They were so, so, they were boring. And he made sure you didn't hear anything new. But it, 
He complains about the so-so candidates after making sure all he got was so-so, so he could report only the so-so candidates in his report. Last but not least, oh, email. Paul Lanois. Paul underscore Lanois Hotmail.com to John Termel. Good evening. I must commend you, John, for your tenacity after these years. If nothing else, you've been consistent and still as confrontational as you were in the 70s and 80s and 90s and O's, okay? With that being typed after 40 years plus, when are you going to accept that one, your combative tactics has to date got you nowhere politically and I'd have gotten so much farther if I hadn't protested being excluded. I've got more votes, he thinks. Two, your critical bitterness is your worst enemy. Yeah, I'm bitter when I'm cheated. And three, your policies and way of thinking are as outdated as you are, he says to a systems engineer who claims smartest man on earth, dot CA. <laughs> your disclaimer, smartest man on earth, leaves much to be desired. He didn't even go look at the video where I explained my claims to the title. And five, um, and finally, put your hard head on the ground upside down and sit on it. Preferably in a pasture as far away from Ottawa as possible. Go away quietly and try to enjoy the rest of your life with peace and tranquility. You deserve it, and so do we. I bid you farewell and good health with much respect. Paul Lanoua. <laughs> Dripping with hypocrisy, eh? Isn't it, Paul? So I said about Smartest Man on Earth, I said, I don't think I can explain my tactics to you. I found that people who spout off before even considering the arguments... You didn't see my video explaining my claim to the title, did you? Are unconvincible. You've made your conclusions. What would my facts do for you? Ha ha ha! So that's it. That's what happened in Ottawa Vanier and how they turned that into a huge disruption by a vandal, a political vandal, John Turnell. <laughs>